try to dig some more back that way. Yeah, I figured that would be better than waiting that time The coroner can order a body exhumed if he has reason to believe the death was a result of a poison or a violent act or something of that nature. There has been one, uh, one individual that has contacted us. This could be a relative. This person has submitted DNA for comparison purposes. So that's really the stimulus to get this done. This is so exciting that they're finally going to exhume the body. But at the same time, I'm so nervous because I'm so afraid that there's going to be nothing there. The grave's been decorated by unknown people for many years. Uh, all that decoration will be taken in as evidence, uh, hopefully to be given over to a family. The body is a, is a daughter of somebody if the parents are still alive, or it could be a mother, or it could be a sister. And if there's a killer still out there, we'll do everything we can to bring them to justice. And I think we're closer now, you know, with the exhumation to get into there. You can't have a suspect until we figure out who a victim is. As soon as we know who she was, then we can figure out where she's from, people that she was associated with, and hopefully find a motive pretty quick. Now, of course, that, when they start putting that dirt in that book. There's just not a lot to work with in this case. Somebody's getting away with it. Until we can identify these bodies, uh, there's the, the criminal aspect of it is somebody's getting away with murder. We gotta look at this from the national level. This is all of our problem. It's not any, it's not Harlan County's problem. This is all of our problem. Sooner or later, we have to address this problem. All over the United States, there are individuals who have died, sometimes as a result of natural causes, sometimes at the hands of others, sometimes at their own hand, that have no identification. So no one knows who they are. And the question comes, where are they missing from? Where are their families? And what should be done about it? They're in offices all over the United States. Some of them have been given final disposition by burial or cremation. And some of them are still waiting in those refrigeration units as they find time to deal with that problem or they just store them. That's a true problem. When you deal with the number of cases that we do, there's a lot of cases that stay with you. Every case stays with you in some form or fashion. But when we're talking about missing and unidentified persons, uh, Jane Arroyo Grande Doe is the one that started the program that we have here now. She was a case and with a young lady that was left in the Arroyo Grande Wash in Henderson, Nevada. She, she was a homicide. Someone's missing their little girl. We came up with the idea of putting dead people's pictures on the internet. Everybody looks at things that are related to Las Vegas. Oftentimes people visit here or they're transient in nature, so we needed to get that word out nationally or internationally. We put all types of warnings so that you couldn't get right to it. You know, I think we had like four or five layers of warnings. The pushback that we got from people in my own business was that it was inappropriate, that it was uh, sacrilegious, that we shouldn't do it. All the things you can imagine that you could think of on the negative side. And then within 24 hours, we got our first hit. And then 48 hours, we got another hit. And then 72 hours after that, we got another hit. And I won't tell you that those hits came that quickly all the time, but those first two or three were big for us. And there was a thought that what if we could do this on a national level? Ultimately, what came out of all those conversations was the NamUs project. NamUs is the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. NamUs is the first national online repository for missing persons records and unidentified decedent cases. The first nationwide system accessible through the internet by the general public to match cases of missing people with records from the nation's coroner and medical examiner offices to help solve these heartbreaking cases. NamUs first went online in 2007 with unidentified human remains. Since then, we've been credited with solving 472 cases, or at least we helped. 
We've never solved Jane Aurora Grande Doe's case. We've still not identified her yet, but we've identified a lot of others. She serves a greater purpose for us, and she serves a greater purpose to all of those people that are missing. And so we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. I certainly would like to see the Mountain Jane Doe case uh, resolved for the purpose of closure for, for a, obviously a family, and in this case, a, a community. As humans, it's important for us to, to know the fate of our loved ones. Aha. Uh -huh. The bones, most of them are intact. I don't expect the ribs to be. They're real fragile anyway, and they've collapsed. Uh, and hopefully a good leg bone. That's what I need, a good long bone. And that's what they're going for right now, so I think we're, we're getting close. So we'll clean that up and get it sent out. I think we got the head right here. I think he's got the skull. The yep. It could be fairly well intact. If I can keep it together. Well, don't force don't it out. Force it out. No, Dig it out there. It's already good. We need to get in behind it just a little bit and loosen that up, I think. I feel very good because these look as good as bones that I've seen submitted. The reason we're not seeing a casket today is because the casket lid was very thin metal and it has completely rusted out and it's just vanished. Water never settled here, but it ran across, so it's easy to think the mud could have just oozed in around the skeleton and then just encased it, which actually apparently protected it. You never know what you're gonna get when you dig a grave, remember that. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get. The remains go directly back to the University of North Texas uh, DNA lab. The DNA material will be extracted from the marrow of the bone, and it can be entered into the, the FBI's DNA database.